Manish Nigam and now I am going to explain you the poem An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum, Class 12, Book Flamingo and it is written by Stephen Spender. In this poem, the poet has explained a pathetic condition actually, a pathetic condition of the people living in slums, especially the children. What are their miseries, how that can be rectified, how that can be removed. What are the certain steps that has to be taken through which the problems can be eradicated? So all these points the poet has explained or discussed in this poem. While we are reading the stanzas, now my dear children remember that you have to keep the certain points, the main points in your mind, stanza wise. Okay. So let me clarify the stanza number one. I'll give you the linear explanation of that. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces, like rootless weeds, the hair torn round their pallor. Two points are there. One, far, far from the gusty waves, means the real wind, the waves, the breeze is not available for these children. Okay. And the second point is there, they, these children's faces. So because they are not provided with the real or fresh air, their faces are dim, their faces are dull, their faces are gloomy. Line number two, their hair, they are like rootless weeds. Weeds you may be understanding. What is weeds? That unplant, unwanted plants grown on the field and then the farmers remove them and throw them away. So the hair of these slum children are like rootless weeds. They are unkempt, they are not washed, they are not calm. So they are scattered around their faces, their pale faces, their dim faces, their dull faces. Line number three. The tall girl with her weighed down head. A tall girl is there, an elderly girl is there in the class. This is actually the scene of a class, a slum school, a slum class, an elementary school. A tall girl is there who is uh, keeping her head down. You may ask why? Maybe because she is uh, poverty stricken. Maybe she is ashamed of a condition. Maybe she is uh, deprived of all other luxuries of life, what we people are provided with. So the girl, the tall girl is just keeping her head down. Now come to the next. The paper seeming boy with her rat's eyes. There is one more boy. That is paper seeming. The poet has compared the boy with her paper. Thin boy. Skinny body, very thin body and the eyes are like rat, they are bulged, they are sunken and they are very small, eyes are very small. So there is a boy who is very thin, his eyes are like rat, he is very weak and what else is there? The stunted, stunted means not developed, not grown. The stunted, unlucky air of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease. What has happened to the boy? The boy is actually diseased. And this disease he has been inherited by his father. Gnarled disease. Gnarled means the twisted bones. So that boy is malnourished. That boy is medically unfit. That boy is unhealthy, that boy is thin, he is sitting in the class and he is looking very weak and he has been inherited a disease that is of twisted bones and that disease is inherited to him by his father and he is not at all interested in the classroom study or in the classroom, rather he is reciting, reciting his own miseries. Now come the last stanza, last line, sorry. 
एट बैक ऑफ द डीम क्लास वन अनोटेड स्वीट एंड यंग हिज आईज लिव इन अ ड्रीम ऑफ स्क्वेरल गेम इन ट्रीज ट्री रूम्स अदर दैन दिस द लास्ट बॉय इन द क्लास हु इज सिटिंग एट द बैक ही इज लॉस्ट इन हिज ओन ड्रीम्स एंड वॉट इज द ड्रीम ही इज अज्यूमिंग दैट he could see out of the window and there he witness witnessed a squirrel playing in the hollow of the tree and the child is dreaming of that innocent child that small child is dreaming of that game so in stanza number 1 first of all remember two three points point number 1 that these children are deprived of fresh air point number 2 they are body is uh, not well uh, well grown their clothes are torn their hair all is scattered around their faces they are not properly dressed or combed or washed or cleaned the tall girl is there who is keeping her head down because of uh, shame there is a boy who is very thin very skinny and uh, his body is not grown fully and he has taken or he has been inherited a disease of twisted bones from his father and there is one more boy who is dreaming of a squirrel game outside of the window stanza number 1 is complete now come to stanza number 2 on sour cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities bell flowery tyrolees valley open handed map awarding the world its world up to here you have to remember two points point number 1 the wall sour cream wall means dirty walls stained walls blotted walls okay and point number 2 the donations are there what are the donation the rich people have donated or gifted the pictures pictures like shakespeare's picture picture of rising sun picture of uh, some domes or some tombs or some other monuments picture of tyrol tyrolees valley that is one of the most beautiful valley in austria and one more thing is there the five things are there so one more thing is there the map and you know what what is what the poet has written about map this map is actually not displays does not display the reality of the slum children because you know the maps are actually designed by the powerful people okay and those power people powerful people have never kept in their mind the situation of poverty stricken or down trodden people so they are not at all given any space in their maps so whosoever the cartographer was cartographer means one who designs the map so whosoever the cartographer was he was forced by the powerful people to design the map in that way so it is a line there open handed map awarding the world its world means the map is displaying only the reality which is liked by the rich people so there are two different world one the world of rich people and the other the world of poor people the down trodden people the poverty stricken people got it and these slum people are or these slum children are from that category only now come to the second part of the stanza number 2 and yet for these children these windows not this map their world where all their future painted with fog as far as these children are concerned these slum children are concerned this map is not their reality the map which is hung there on the wall is not their reality because their reality lies there in that window what is this window the window means the slum where they live that is called window here so the place where they live it is their harsh reality and the outside world outside map is not at all associated with them them not this map their world where all their future painted with fog and their future their destiny is all blotted there is no scope of progress there is no scope of growth got it a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky far from rivers capes and stars of world a narrow street means the streets or the gullies where they live you know you you might be knowing that the slum people how they live in one small room there 10 to 12 people are living together 
and the streets that the drainage are all there the gutter is flow overflowing the mosquitoes are breeding and lot of foul smell so a lot of misery a lot of troubles a lot of problems are there so those small narrow streets are actually like the confinement a prison a hell to them and that is also blotted and these children are far away from capes rivers and stars if you see the first line far far from gusty waves means they are deprived of the fresh air and they are also not uh, provided the opportunity to go and see the river the stars or the capes got it now come to stanza number 3 Surely Shakespeare is wicked the map is a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal Shakespeare is a bad example or wicked person for them because these children are not at all interested in Shakespeare or the literature or the map because they are confined in their reality what it is there got it and nobody is there to love them they are always beaten they are always ridiculed they are always insulted their life is engaged in doing all odd jobs ragging the pigs from the garbage from the waste some are there engaged in begging also so they are far far away from such realities got it and all those fascinating things attractive things like the Uh, Tyre Louis Valley or the rising sun or the do- domes of other cities or metropolitan cities or any attractive thing tempted or tempting them or enticing them actually to commit a crime now check the line again surely shakespeare is a wicked the map is bad example with ship and sun and love tempting them to steal the steal is their word given but it is actually related with a crime so these all are tempting them or enticing them to crime or commit a crime for lives that slyly turn in their crammed holes lives that slyly turned awfully their life has been turned into that crammed hole what is this crammed hole the slum those narrow streets those catacombs got it which is like a hell so their life is all about the slum from fog to endless night till their birth since the birth till their death they are poverty stricken they are downtrodden they are poor they are miserable they are pathetic and they live a life of troubles and sufferings got it on their slag heap these children wear a skin peeped through by bones and a spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones now this particular line you understand two points are there point number 1 when they are going to g- collect the garbage or just pick the rags or other things their body is clearly visible and you can count each and every bone of their body the bones are all just emerging out of their body got it point number 2 that is the spectacles spectacle the eye glass the spectacles that they have is actually made of steel rim and the glass they have repaired or the mended there is like a broken piece of a bottle means they don't have a real spec that they can wear all of their time and space are foggy slum so their fortune their destiny their luck everything is confined to that small area that slum and so blot their map with slum as big as doom so now this slum is actually a blot a stain a blemish part for those people who are rich those who are powerful it is like a blot for them and this doom this curse must be eradicated must be removed from the world last stanza how now the last stanza clarifies that how such things can be improved who are the people who can take initiative so that the situation of such people can be improved okay now see unless governor inspector visitor this map become their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs so governor inspector and visitor means those people who are in power simply you understand those people who are in power they must intervene 
they must interfere in their lives whose lives the slum people life the slum, ch slum children's life unless until such initiatives are taken their condition will not change they will remain where they are they will remain in that crammed hole got it so the responsibility of these people is to take them out of these slums and take them to their world what is their world the world full of fantasy the world full of modernization the world full of progress the world full of medicine everything is there but in that life in that slums life nothing is there so what poet says this map becomes their window means the map which is hung there the world map it can become their map also when such people like governor inspector and visitor intervene in their life and they can pick them up from there and take them to their world and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacomb and this window this window means the window of slum the area of slum the atmosphere of slum if that slum place is not broken into pieces yes any initiative has to be taken and if that initiative is not taken their life will remain like a catacomb catacomb means that underground uh, graves okay so the lives of these people are or the slum people are like uh, hell and uh, if some initiatives are taken by some responsible people then only these people's life can be changed break or break open till they break the town and show the children to green field and make their world run as her on gold sands break or break open means all shackles all hurdles all obstacles whatever obstacle comes to that their path should be removed and they should be shown the real world the nature the forest the river the mountain everything show the children to green fields and make their world run as on gold sands they must be shown the seas the oceans the beach and let them run and let their tongues run naked into book the white and green leaves open history they are whose language is the sun now last three line please understand carefully and let their tongues run naked into books they must be given a freedom to go through the books let them read the books let them understand the books and the white and green leaves open what are the white leaves the book and what are the green leaves the nature so the poet says that the children the slum children must be provided the opportunity to go and see the world outside the world what it is look like okay and the second point that he says that they must be given the knowledge a lot of knowledge so that they can enhance their potential their caliber their guts their spirit because without knowledge nothing can be done so here the poet emphasizes that they must be given green leaves and white leaves nature as well as knowledge run naked into books and white and green leaves open history their whose language is the sun and this is the main point of the poem my dear children those who have been provided the energy the warmth the power of sun only those people have changed the history and yes of course these children the slum children have that potential have that caliber they can also change the history but the only thing is that initiative is required if they are taken out from that place that uh, situation where they are living now and given a new responsibility a new opportunity they can also change the history the only thing is they must be removed from there so this was the complete explanation of poem class 12 and elementary school of slum that i hope you will have understood thank you and god